Hey guys, it's Jax with Outpost Gray. And today I want to talk to you about cyber threat intel and some of the frameworks that you will utilize in this space. The four frameworks that you will typically see and what I utilize on a day-to-day -day basis include the Diamond Model, Pyramid of Pain, Cyber Kill Chain, and the MITRE ATT&CK framework. I am not going to deep dive into any of these. I wanna provide you a high level overview to allow you enough information to be able to pivot into your own research and learn a little bit more about each of these toolings. The diamond model intrusion analysis was designed to provide granular details for the analysts on a specific adversary and the victims or the campaigns associated with that adversary. So typically what you'll see on this is you'll see one adversary at the top, say APT29, and then you'll see a plethora of information that's flowing down from the infrastructure, the victim and the capability. Now this model is extremely detailed and it must be constantly updated. So it's very, very manual. You can build this out however you see fit. There isn't a certain platform that you need to utilize for tracking this information. Another great thing about the diamond model is it can be overlaid using the cyber kill chain. And this is just an example of overlaying the cyber kill chain with the diamond model on the right hand side. And I know this is really small. It was more for a visual depiction to show you how detailed this can get and how necessary it is to be constantly updating this information around the diamond model. The Pyramid of Pain was designed to provide a visual depiction for cybersecurity professionals to have a better understanding of the pain or the discomfort that adversaries have to go through when they have to change a certain thing as part of their uh, TTPs or their campaigns. So starting at the bottom, if we look at hash values, this is really trivial for the adversary, such as a you could say a SHA-1 or an MD-5, all of these hashes are pretty easy to make and recreate, so it doesn't take a lot of effort or manpower to change these. Next is IP addresses. Uh, this is still, again, very easy for them to change, but it becomes just a little bit harder. Domain names, this could either be a domain itself or a subdomain. And this is a little bit more challenging to change for the adversary, but it's still fairly simple. With domains, you're starting to get into the infrastructure where you're going to have C2 domains or their staging domains. The next thing we, that we have, which is more annoying than anything, is the adversary having to change their network and hosting artifacts. These are observables caused by an adversary's activity on one or more of your, your host. They could be registered create keys or values known to be created by specific pieces of malware. So this is getting, again, annoying, but still not extremely hard for the adversary to change. The next second to last one we have is tooling. Now this is where it starts getting really challenging for the adversaries to change because within tooling, you will typically have software used by the adversary to accomplish their mission. Mostly it'll be things that they bring with them rather than software commands, they may already be installed on the computer. This could include utilities designed to create malicious documents for spear phishing. And if we took this away from the adversary, it's going to be harder for them to circumvent around that. And now the last thing that we've got are the TTPs. This is really tough for the adversary to change. And as a cybersecurity professional, this is something that we strive to take away from them. Now, what is a TTP? A tactic, technique, and procedure. But really, what is that for the adversary? This is how the adversary goes about accomplishing their mission. From the reconnaissance all the way through the data exfiltration and everything in between. For example, we know that phishing is one of the primary vectors to target a network. But to be even more specific, we should could say phishing with a specific Trojan that had a PDF file with a link to a malicious file that was disguised as a zip. And knowing how that process was laid out and what type of files that were utilized, that's where you're starting to dive into the details and understanding the adversary's TTPs. And once we are able to identify that and be able to put alerting in place and put mitigation tools in place, then the adversaries are going to have to 
reinvent their TTPs, this is where cost comes into play, where they're going to have to restructure a lot of things in their own infrastructure, and it becomes more and more challenging for them. So our goal is to be at the top of that. The cyber kill chain was created by Lockheed Martin, and I have seen it heavily used in the DOD. That is where I initially saw the cyber kill chain utilized prior to coming to the private sector. This model was really designed to trace the stages of a cyber attack while identifying the vulnerabilities to help the cybersecurity professionals prevent future attacks within their infrastructure. The kill chain, as you can see, is broken down into seven steps, and it's the steps that an adversary will take to make it to the final actions on the objective. Uh, first one that you see there, that's the reconnaissance. That's where they're going to collect the data about the, the target. This includes harvesting email addresses and gathering other information. The next step in here is the weaponization step. Attackers develop malware by leveraging security vulnerabilities or, and those vulnerabilities could be uh, a software that you haven't patched on your network. And so that's where they identify, they do the recon, they identify where your vulnerabilities are, and then they weaponize according to that. Three is the deliverable. The, how is this attack going to be delivered? The, the attacker delivers the weaponized malware by a say, as we used earlier, phishing, a phishing email to Margaret in Counting or Steve in IT, who then clicks on it to start trying to begin that download. But nothing happens if they don't click on it. It's just been delivered. And that's where a lot of these attacks will stop typically because of the antivirus or other alerting that's in place. But say it gets past number three, and now we're into number four, which is the exploitation phase. This is where the malicious code is delivered into the organizational system. So this is where the phishing email has come in, it's been clicked on, and now the download has begun. After the exploitation, we move into installation, where typically this is where a backdoor remote access Trojan is installed. And why the adversaries will do this is to provide a way for easy access in and out of the network. Uh, this is another really important stage because this is where the attacker can be stopped using systems such as a host pace intrusion pre prevention system. So there's still time right now, but if they get past stage five, the install phase, then there's no looking back. They've moved into the command and control. They've basically set up shop inside of your your environment, the attacker gains control and they began communicating back to, we'll call it home station, to then move into the final stage, which is number seven, actions on the objective. And this is the attacker's final point where they will either encrypt or they will extract objective is now taking place. It is hands on the keyboard. So the last thing is the MITRE attack. This is my personal favorite because I love the details within the tactics and the techniques and how MITRE does a great job on their website, being able to lay everything out, hyperlinking everything so you can deep dive into different tactics and techniques in the different adversaries. MITRE was created in 2013, and since then, it's really been developed into a very useful platform and tooling for cyber threat intel analysts. There are a lot of threat intel platforms that actually integrate MITRE attack into their platform. So when you pull reporting, you can see the MITRE attack framework tied into those activities, which helps cybersecurity professionals with their alerting that they have on their, on their systems. MITRE has 14 tactics where it has techniques as subcategories to them. What you have here are the 14 tactics columns ranging from the reconnaissance to the impact. And then underneath those, you can start diving into the techniques of the adversaries or the campaign that you're looking into. This is a great source of information that you can layer onto say the cyber kill chain and it is really helpful to help you create that intelligence picture on what was actually happening on your network. Here's a really good visual depiction. You can go online. I know this is probably really small and really hard to read. So I would encourage you to go online and learn more about the MITRE ATT&CK framework. 
Again, the top is all of the tactics that you can dig into. So for example, if you're looking on the third column, initial access, some of the techniques that you would see underneath that would include phishing or the supply chain compromise. And underneath each of those, you've got sub to the subcategories that you can break down even further. And what's great about MITRE ATT&CK is all of these are hyperlinked. So if you wanna learn more about phishing and what adversaries utilize phishing, you can click on that and it'll deep dive you a little bit further into it. That is all I've got for today. I hope that helped you out. Please reach out with any questions that you have and also like and subscribe. I'll see you guys next week.